uh, we have guests at every Mass. At this Mass, we have uh, Mary Maher. Mary is uh, a consecrated woman, and she um, has her uh, doctorate in theology, and she runs our Lydia Institute, which is an institute for pro professional women. And so why don't you join me, Mary, a little bit? And as um, we welcome you today uh, to Clements, you know, I, it's easy to, of course, talk about, now it's funny because she has actually more degrees than I do. So, you know, it's a little bit intimidating to interview but her. But I but, still can't ride a bike. No, I'm kidding. Uh, um. but, 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 but it's easy to, it's easy to write, rationalize God the Father as a creator, right? God the Son as a redeemer. But when you arrive to the Holy Spirit, we use, uh, the, the description we use is sanctifier, which, what the heck sanctifier means, right? It just goes shh right over our heads. So, so can you, like, in your own life, you know, how did you get to the point of understanding who is the Holy Spirit? And, and, and just help us to unpack it a little bit, because obviously I can't, so you go ahead and do it. First of all, I wish I had an aunt like you. I'm one of six kids, and my parents were kind of like, you're ready, you're ready, and literally my dad let me go on a hill. I wiped out so bad, my knees have still not recovered. So lucky you that you have a sweet aunt. Um, some of us had to learn the hard way, right? Uh, but the Holy Spirit, I would agree with you, Father Peter. It, you know, it's for many years for me, it was kind of like, you know, the little white dove that you remember once a year on Pentecost. And I think it was years back when I heard the second reading, if I'm sure everybody was paying attention, right? Nobody's distracted. Um, that laundry list of, of gifts of the Spirit got my attention one day when it when Paul is writing to the early church and he's saying the fruit or the consequence of living a relationship with the Holy Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience, faithfulness, gentleness, generosity, self-control. Something was like awakened in me and I was like, I need every single one of those. I mean, love, joy, peace, patience. Who doesn't need patience? And so I started to think about, you know, why did Jesus say it was better for us that he left so that he could breathe into us his spirit. And I just started trying to, you know, think of the Holy Spirit more. And, and I think uh, I've had a couple of, of powerful experiences of the Holy Spirit. One of them, even just recently, because I think all of us are constantly trying to deepen in our experience of the Holy Spirit during the pandemic, which was a very painful time for all of us. My sister's husband, Joe, got really sick. Um, the guy literally has never had a cavity. And suddenly at age 42, he had borderline stage four colon cancer, three and a half inch tumor that turned into a, a really tough surgery, uh, chemo, tumor in his throat, liver issues, uh, looked like liver cancer. And on top of that, the pandemic and just the low immunity. And every time he went out to chemotherapy, it was just the, the intense fear of, you know, will he get COVID too? And I think all of us know someone probably who's been through cancer. It is so scary and so painful and and for me you know in in our line of work we're constantly speaking about the beautiful things in scripture you know that the holy spirit is with us that the holy spirit takes away fear and gives us courage and and wisdom and and there i was you know just unable to access any of the things i so often preach and watching my five-year-old niece just sobbing because daddy has cancer watching my sister Anne. Um, try to be so strong for those five kids of hers and finding her behind the house or in the garage just weeping because she just, her heart was breaking. I found myself really stressed. And I think all of us have situations of stress. Certain things trigger us. For some of you, it's the boss. This guy's so nice, that's not my trigger. But my trigger, my, my trigger that just puts me into like fight or flight big time is when my family is suffering. When somebody I know and love is sick heart attack my dad's heart attack uh, my brother-in-law's cancer there are moments where as much as i believe in god and i believe in his love i get super revved and stressed and suddenly i'm like my mind is spinning i'm doing a million things trying to help and let's face it we can do a lot of things but there's one thing we cannot do we cannot force the outcome when it comes to the destiny of our loved ones we cannot make things happen when it comes to illness and, and tragedy, we're, we're simply uh, at a loss. We cannot affect the change we want to affect. And so I was really stressed and 
you know, doing a lot of things to try to help, and, and it really, I, was, I wasn't sleeping well, and, and so, you know, I really just kind of broke down at one point, and I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, Holy Spirit, I want to trust God, but I can't get there. It's like riding the bike. You know, I, I want to believe, I want to trust, I want to let go, and I am just, like, really torn up about this. And it's affecting me. It's affecting my sleep. It's affecting my attitude, my, my mood. And I just started to say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. And a friend of mine had suggested that I, that I just ask the Holy Spirit to help me to take my sister and her husband and those five girls from my heart and just put them on the altar and just let go. And I think all of you know how hard it is to let go. It is so hard to really deeply release that control we want to have over the outcome, especially for our families. And so as I was just saying, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, I just started weeping. And I felt this very real, deep peace that just started to fill me. I could feel it. I can still remember. And so I just said, Holy Spirit, help me to trust at a deeper level. Help me to trust in the Father's plan. Help me to just let go. And I just envisioned an altar and just kind of put my brother-in-law, my sister, and those five little girls. And something in me changed. And I, I don't know how to explain it other than the Holy Spirit showed up and flipped a little switch inside that my mind and my theology degree and my religious background, nothing was getting me to that stage of trust that I wanted to offer God, but I was trying on my own. I was saying, from my spiritual resources, God, I want to trust you. And I was falling short. And when the Holy Spirit came in, and I just said, I can't, I, I want to trust God, I can't. He just kind of moved me into a place of surrender, which I think, I don't know if you agree, but I think that is the hardest thing in life. It's easier, I think, to suffer ourselves. You know, we can white knuckle through our own suffering, but when it's someone we love, it's so hard to deeply surrender. And so I've, I've tried to just rely on the Holy Spirit. Um, my dad had a heart attack uh, a few days before Christmas. And again, it was like, okay, take my father from my heart, put him on the altar. Holy Spirit, let me, help me to let go. So it's, it's a lot of, I feel like it's, it's actually not, it's harder than riding a bike because normally once you ride a bike, you've kind of got it. It's, it's something I think we have to again and again lean into and Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit help me to trust, help me to love, help me to forgive, help me to believe, help me to have peace or joy. At an action of redoing it, I mean there's no doubt that we constantly have to, that's why in the liturgy of the church we celebrate holidays every single year, it's an invitation right to remind ourselves that, because we, we all forget about it from time to time, right, it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit, so it's, it's like we, relearning it or re-engaging again, but the memory is there, and the more the memory is there, the more we look at the evidence of our life, right? We look at the last X number of years of your life, and you can see, wow, God show up there, God show up there, God show up there, God show up there. What makes me feel in this very difficult moment that I am, that God will not show up, because God always did show up. So it just doesn't seem like a logical thing. And I think putting all those pieces together, that's why the church invites us to reflect on the scripture, right? Because in the word of God, we hear the evidence. There's no clearer evidence of God showing up than the Bible, right? Because through the sin and through horrible uh, and unfaithfulness of his own people, God constantly shows up. Mary, but how do, you, how do you then do it, right? I mean, that, that really, you know, people might be sitting here or watching back at home and saying, okay, that sounds pretty and nice, good for you. But, but, but how do I start it, right? Where do I start this journey of actually letting Holy Spirit, letting, you know, letting go and letting the Holy Spirit in? It's always so practical. Such a great pastor. Um, years ago, I read a spiritual book, and there's a cardinal, a French cardinal, who said, if you spend just five minutes a day inviting the Holy Spirit to come in, just being still, and just inviting the Holy Spirit to lead your life, your life will drastically change. And something about reading that, I, was, I always like a challenge, and I always like to try things out. I said, okay, I'm going to try this. And I think I can look back, like you say, it's, it's good every now and then to look back and say, wow, when I started that, I took that book really seriously. I felt called to try doing that just every day, and, and I do it in the morning. 
And it's hard for me still because probably most, how many use the phone for an alarm clock? I think a lot of us use the phone, right? So you grab that phone and, you know, messages, emails, texts, notifications. It's so easy for most of us, I think, to wake up and hit the ground running. And so I really felt as I read that I need to make sure the first five minutes of my day are that quiet, still space where I invite the Holy Spirit in before I get to answering people and, you know, good things. But, but first I felt really called to just hold myself still. There's a line I love from scripture in Exodus chapter 17. Uh, the word of God says, the Lord will fight for you. He will fight your battles for you. The only thing you have to do is be still. And I kind of connected that to those five minutes. Okay, if I can just wait five minutes before I rush into my day, you know, who do I think I am? Am I really that important? Can I not wait five minutes? Say, Holy Spirit, come. Um, Holy Spirit, I give you permission. Lead my life. Lead this day. Give me the insight I need to serve your people. Give me the courage, the wisdom, the peace, the patience. Uh, and just those five minutes. And it, it, believe it or not, it's still kind of hard. I, I, I really, it's like those disciplines, you like exercising maybe, where you just, in my case, I have to force myself to do that. And the times that I don't, my day's a little more frantic. I'm a little more stressed, a little less peaceful. Um, so I think just every morning, trying to carve out a space to really give God permission. Because when we do that, two things happen. One, we really do start to experience the fullness of life. Jesus promised us what he desires for us. But in order to give us that gift, we have to make a space every day. And so I, I really think calling down the Spirit gives us the experience of being filled with that list we heard, love and joy and peace, patience, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness. And the other thing is miracles start to happen because the Spirit wants to equip us to do God's work. And boy, do we need God's light and love to be sweeping through our city, right, and our, our world, especially after such a tough year. So I think just the daily practice right. and being still and quiet. Silence is really hard for me and maybe for some of you. So. That's, that's, that's easy, not easy to do, but, but, but something that we all can try. And we'll keep the miracles for the next time. But boy, did we see a lot of miracles in the last two years happening. We surely both encounter so much of God's power um, in the church and in the communities that we were praying with. And so Mary, as we conclude today, you know, this is the day Jesus promised that the same Holy Spirit he received, he will give us. Not less of it, not inferior but the same Holy Spirit, the same, that enabled him to heal and feed the hungry and touch people of mercy. The same Spirit is accessible to everybody in this church right now. So would you just uh, uh, pray for us that we all will receive the Holy Spirit? I just invite all of you here just to close your eyes for a moment. And if you are watching us, close your eyes too and um, online. And, and Mary, just if you can lead us in just in a moment of prayer so we can be open to the Holy Spirit. I invite all of you to take a deep, deep breath and just to breathe in the breath of God, His Spirit. And to breathe out any negativity, any stress, any doubt, any fear, anything that's trying to take up space that the Spirit of God wants to gently fill. Father, we ask that you would extend your loving, creative, all-powerful hands over us right here, right now. Father, breathe your spirit into this place. Breathe your spirit into each and every person gathered in this holy place. Father, you know us. Jesus told us you know what we need. And so, Father, we just make space to receive the great gift of your spirit. And Father, we... We take a step forward in trust as we put on the altar here, this altar where your son will come down and once again give his life to save us, to give us the fullness of life. We just release onto that altar anything that's burdening us. One thing, one thing that weighs on our minds and hearts, one thing that might be keeping us up at night, making our minds spin 
We just place it here on the altar and we trust that you will provide for all of our needs. You will provide for what our loved ones need. And as we release the fear, the stress, the, the burden, we just open our hearts, our minds, our hands to receive the gift that you want to give us tonight. Maybe for some of us, Father, it's, it's wisdom, discernment for making a decision, clarity. Maybe for others, it's courage and strength, strength in suffering, strength to continue to provide and lead our families. And Father, most of all, we ask that your spirit right here and right now would touch us with your peace the peace that the world can never give us, the peace that the world can never take from us, the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding. We just welcome that peace into our spirit, into our hearts and into our homes. Spirit of God, we give you permission to work powerfully in us and through us to shine the light of Christ into our homes, our communities, our city, our nation, and our world. Spirit of God, protect us from danger. Heal our illnesses. Equip us to do God's work. And fill us with the fullness of life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us. So good to be with you today. And I think Mary will do one more mess tomorrow, 11.15.